So in the Falcons, the least surprising move of the year. Jalen Mayfield, their left guard, third round pick, second year player who started 17 games last year for them, was not activated off of IR. And his 21 day window came and went. And now he's on IR for the rest of the year. Okay. A bunch of things about this. We told you that this was going to happen, right? I told you weeks and months ago that I never thought he'd see the active roster this year. What does that say, though, that your third round draft pick, who's in his second year, is not even going to spend a minute on the active roster this year? Well, he's hurt. Okay. You could have taken every bone out of his back and replaced it with dinosaur bones, and he'd be healed and healthier than the amount of time that he's missed. You literally could put in Terminator. You could put adamantium into Jalen Mayfield, and he'd have been fine and fixed and healed by now. I mean, this is more than just injury, folks. And, and at some point, we're going to have to look at the, the, that draft you know, from, from their first year. When your general manager in his first year of drafting is already missing on third round picks, this is why your roster gets to be the way it is. Miss me with all the money. That means that it's even more important that you get these draft picks right. When you don't have money, when you're in cap purgatory, you have to get cheap labor that's productive for you. You can't afford to swing and miss on your first, second, third round picks. You'll swing and miss on your sixth and sevenths. I get all that. But you can't swing and miss one or two years in on your first, second, third round types of picks. And I hate to say, but there, there's there's getting, I, I, I have my concerns about where we're at with the direction of this franchise as far as our drafting strategy, guys that we're picking, why we're picking guys, addressing what we need. I keep hearing this best available player and all that stuff, but we're not getting the best available players. I'm watching guys all over the league. It is, is Kyle Pitts the best available when I'm watching Micah Parsons destroy the NFL? I mean, destroy the NFL. They're the best defense in the NFL. They're the best sack team in the NFL. Why do you think that is? You think that's because Dan Quinn is such a great coach? Because he's just a defensive mind, huh? The guy when the Legion of Boom was being built was down in Gainesville, Florida. That guy. The guy who couldn't coach his way out of a paper bag in this organization. That should tell you how good Micah Parsons is, the fact that he's going to get Dan Quinn another job in the NFL. And they're the ultimate game-wrecking defense because of that one guy, a guy we could have had. So this was not surprising at all. You know, it, it's... Mayfield was always going to be a project. So many people sold me on last year when I kept saying, this dude's the worst offensive lineman in the NFL. Well, no, you got to give him time. He's out of position. He's a project or this, or that. The kid started 13 games in college, and they took him with a third-round pick. 13 games in college as a right tackle. So you take a guy who barely started in college and put him in a position that he hadn't played in college, Start him the entire year. Because this is the other funny part. Well, you know, everybody knew Mayfield was bad. Well, if you knew he was bad, why did he start 17 games last year? What, did the league force you to play him 17 games? You could have gotten any ham and egg or jabroni off the street and, and plugged him in and gotten better results for it last year. Did you really need 17 games to figure out that this was not working? I knew it after three games that this was not working. Actually, after week one, it was a disaster for Mayfield. So not surprising. But again, this is not a place where we can afford to swing and miss on these kinds of picks. This is not a situation where we can afford to have our general manager just swing and miss on all of this stuff. And that's what makes it frustrating is you've got a first, second-year general manager, and we're already seeing guys that can't make the roster. We're already seeing our third-round pick. This, I hope this does not turn into what Dimitrov and, and Dan Quinn had in their final year. 
because again, all these just vagabonds that this roster had. When you're 80 million or 70 million or whatever in dead cap money, you can't miss on third rounders. You can't have those guys just not be active on your roster. That's how you still have to build. We're not a Super Bowl team like the Rams. The Rams went to the Super Bowl. They can say those draft picks. We can't. You have to have cheap labor that overperforms in the NFL. And that's my concern is just where we're at. with all. And we're going to talk about the offensive line here in a few minutes. And there's been a lot of good things about the offensive line. It's actually pretty wild how good they've been. But instead of a third round project or whatever that you played out of position, we couldn't have gotten another defensive lineman or a corner or something that would help this football team. And Jalen Mayfield is what he is. We'll see if he's back with the team next year. I, I told you weeks and months ago on this podcast, I think Jalen Mayfield will get one last chance to start for the Atlanta Falcons in training camp next year. And if he can't start, it'll be like Marlon Davidson. If he can't find a way to start, they'll use injury and put him out for a while, and then they'll just release him. They'll, they'll, they'll manipulate the injury report like I told you they would with Deion Jones, and they'll do the same thing. That way you can just stash and dash him until you're ready to trade him, release him, whatever. It'll be that same scenario. If he can't figure it out next year, he'll be gone. Those are things right now that you can't afford to have your general manager miss on, is third-round picks this early in their tenure. So I wasn't surprised at all to see the move yesterday that he just – going to float in IR because that's the easiest thing to do. Then you don't have to answer questions about it, right? Then you also don't have to get in front of a of a podium on a Monday and say, hey, what's going on with Jalen Mayfield? Oh, no, he's still hurt. He's on IR. Y'all believe Jalen Mayfield is still hurt? He told you a couple of weeks ago, yeah, I'm back. Give me a couple of weeks and I'll be ready to play. That was his words. His words. Not the coach, not – some some lackey for the team, Jalen Mayfield said, I won't be ready to start when I come right off, but a couple of weeks I should be ready to go. We have another setback? Come on, folks. You know exactly that what the deal is on all this kind of stuff. And look, there are, there are, there are questions about that draft now that are going to have to be answered. We'll probably get into it because – there are some good pieces in that first draft, but there are some pieces that are starting to just be like, I don't know about all this kind of stuff. I want to remind you, make uh, Locked On Sports Today your second listen. Check out Locked On Sports Today, the biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. They're available on Odyssey, YouTube, or wherever it gets your podcast from. Make sure you check out Locked On Sports Today.